To start drawing your glass set in Rhino, maximize that front viewport and click on the control point curve icon. You can also just type the word curve in the command line and press enter. The beginning of the curve will be at zero, so I'll type in zero and enter, and then left mouse button click to drop the rest of the points. Now that first point out from center is a point that is made by holding down the shift key and then clicking and the shift key will turn on your ortho snap to keep it in a straight line. And after you're finished with the outer wall, right before the lip of the glass, press enter, and then enter again to start drawing another curve that describes the interior wall. And there I use smart track to keep everything in line. And I want these two points, turn on my control points there with F10, I want these to be in line, so I'm going to use a command called set point, S-E-T-P-T, and that lets me line up these control points in either the X, Y, or Z axis, or any combination of those. And after it's level, I'll use the command blend to make a third blend curve, and then join all three of those curves together into one by pressing the J key with them selected, and enter. And then I'll use the revolve command and make the revolve axis right along the Z, starting at zero and there is one of the revolved glasses. Now I modeled this by eye for uh, use as a juice glass, but I want to make sure that it can hold the right amount of volume for a juice glass. So in fluid ounces, juice glasses are typically between 5 and 10 ounces, and we can analyze volume in Rhino, uh, but we're going to need a mass in order to do that. So I'm going to make a box, and this box is from center, that's one of the options in the command line when running the box command. And just make it bigger than the glass and position it so that you can do a boolean difference. Selecting the box first and then the glass and make sure delete input equals no in the command line. And that'll keep your box from being um, the only thing left. You want that glass to stay around and then you select that interior volume, go to analyze, mass properties, volume and you'll get the readout in cubic millimeters. So 191,000 cubic millimeters is a little too big. The juice glass at 5 ounces should be about 145,000 cubic millimeters. So I'm going to use the scale command, selecting both the liquid volume and the glass, and scaling down from zero. So scale will scale in three dimensions at once. And then I'll select that interior volume and run the volume command again until I'm close to 145. And once you get it as close as possible, make two copies and drag them off to the side. Here I'm working on the tumbler or rocks glass on the left side, and I finished the scaling and volume analysis for the pint glass on the right side. Pint glasses should be 475,000 cubic millimeters for 16 fluid ounces. And the tumbler, what I'm aiming at here, is 300,000 cubic millimeters. And that'll equal around 10 fluid ounces. So it's more of the same. Scale 1D, scale 2D. Do another Boolean difference if you hadn't already, and analyze the volume. If you want, you can also edit by control points, which I'm doing here. You can shift to add or control key to remove as you left click. And then I use the command cell U to select all the control points in those rows in the U direction of the surface. And then you can drag them uh, up or down to make that base thicker or thinner. But if you do the control point editing, you're going to need to make another volume for your uh, analysis. And I'm aiming for 300 again, so select both the glass and the fluid volume and do a scale 2D, make it a little bit wider in the X and Y directions, and run volume again. And there are the three finished sized glasses. We've got our tumbler at 300,000, 
juice glass at 145,000 and the pint at 475.